calling building and zoning uh, meeting to order for the 7th of June. Uh, first item on the agenda is zoning hearing board agenda for June 12th. Uh, we're gonna go through these and get some explanation as we go. Item 1A is appeal number 233725, Wincote Academy for 38 East Glenside Avenue. Mr. Sekawangu, would you enlighten us? Yes, this is the former Lincoln Financial Building. Um, we have an application uh, before you that's going to the Zoning Hearing Board on the 12th regarding Wincourt Academy, who is proposing to utilize this uh, space for, for the school, for school use. And as part of the process, uh, we, we, as part of our review, we made a, a determination that they needed a zoning approval to change the use from an office use to, um, to a school use, which they are appealing. Uh, additionally, we also made a recommendation that the, the lot does not mean the minimum requirements um, for the new proposed use. And uh, they're appealing that as well. In addition to the requirement for off-street parking, we are not sure how many spaces are being proposed. Uh, they will be sharing that as part of their request for relief. And um, uh, as part of the school use, they also require to provide an outdoor play area, which they're not providing. And uh, do not uh, actually also, I believe, don't believe they need that. But again, their, their um, council is online. Mr. Eric Watt, you can take over. Thank you very much, and uh, very good to see all of you again this month. Um, uh, as a first point, uh, I'd like to say as a former Eagle Scout who uh, did a project on behalf of my township, Hatfield Township, a couple of decades ago, it was really uh, nice to see another Scout keeping the tradition up, and, and I'll let the board know that um, it was uh, it, it was a very fond memory for me when I was able to present my project to the township, so it was really good to see that this evening. Um, as as uh, Henry said, my name is Eric Wirt. I'm an attorney at Shell Bartle Dooley. I'm here on behalf of Wincote Academy regarding the property at 38 Glenside Avenue. Uh, as many of you know, Wincote has been a vital member of the Sheltonham Township community for many years, having been in the township continuously since its founding in 1973. The Academy currently educates 60 students in grades six through 12, serving students from eight local school districts from families who place a high value on education. Students only get to Wincote if they have a strong support from parents, guardians, or other advocates. In fact, the school reports that 85% of Wincote Academy graduates attend a four-year undergraduate program or two-year associates program. The academy was originally located in a former mansion in the township located uh, in the township located on West uh, Church Road. You will recall that this property was the subject of a recent zoning application and came before this board. Uh, I'm pleased to announce that uh, we were successful in front of the zoning hearing board, keeping the school use there. This property uh, was the main site of the academy from 1973 until the mansion was uh, destroyed by fire in 2015. At that time, Wincote found a new main location at Gretz College on Old York Road in the township. Uh, now, because the lease uh, with Gretz College is coming to an end, Wincote Academy is now looking for its next location and has applied to the zoning hearing board for the relief necessary to move less than two miles from their current location to 38 East Glenside Avenue. Um, I'll note that it's important to the academy that they remain in Cheltenham. To be clear, this is a totally separate and different property than the one that uh, I previously presented to this board and to the zoning hearing board. Um, if I could share my screen, I'd like to take you through a couple of uh, images just so that you understand the, the partial that's uh, at issue. Okay, you should have access. All right, thank you. All right, are you able to see my screen? Yeah. All right, I'll bring doesn't up a look picture. Like this is a... <laughs> no, no, it certainly doesn't. Um, this is uh, an aerial of the property that's at issue. Um, this is the building, 38 East Glenside Avenue. Across the street is Cheltenham Motors, the post office. Down here at the bottom of the screen is a parking lot uh, for the train station. There's a neighborhood area here and surrounding the property on all sides. Uh, I just wanted to share that so you get a, a sense. This is the size of the building. It's a very significant parking lot. Um, and we'll discuss the parking a little bit uh, in, the, uh, in the presentation. This is a picture of the building itself. Um, 
I, frankly, I think that it looks very much like a school building. Uh, with that being said, it's had a long history and, and I, I understand it's been around since the 30s. Um, this property is uh, roughly 1.79 acres in size and is located in the township's R2 residential district. The property has been the location of commercial office space since the 1980s, and its most recent tenant was Lincoln Invest Investments. Lincoln outgrew this space and has been looking to sell it for the last five or six years. Prior to its use as a commercial office space, the property had been a garage for Bell telephone trucks for decades. Uh, like I said, I, I believe that uh, it's existed in that form since the 30s. Both of these uses, the commercial office use and the garage use, are non-conforming uses in the R2 residential district. Therefore, this property is classified as existing non-conformity under the Township Zoning Code. Uh, Henry pointed this out, but I think that uh, I'll kind of recraft what he said. Our application isn't so much an appeal that we need zoning relief. Um, our main thrust is uh, that we uh, apply for a special exception under Section 295 2502B2 of the zoning code to allow for a change in non-conforming use. That section states that a non-conforming use may be changed to another non-conforming use of the same general character, provided that the applicant obtains the special exception under the code. That's what we're asking for primarily. Uh, we believe that the academy use is not only of the same general character of the existing commercial office use, but is actually a significant improvement over the office use for the neighborhood. In fact, uh, for a great portion of our country's history, the suburbs were full of neighborhood schools that were surrounded by houses in each direction. Therefore, we believe that the school uses are much more compatible with nearby uh, residential uses than offices. For example, uh, the previous office use had 130 employees regularly on site. The Wing Code Academy use will have 75 individuals on site, comprised of 60 students in grades 6 through 12 and limited staff. Lincoln had hours of operation from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., although most employees work from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Wing Code Academy will have limited school hours from 7.30 a.m. to 4. The previous office use used all of the 90 par parking spaces, and I'll go back to that screen. They use all of the 90 parking spaces in their parking lot um, regularly. In fact, uh, Lincoln was forced to uh, enter into a lease with a neighboring property and I believe that that's this property down here, if you can see where I'm referring uh, to have the overflow of parking. Wincote expects that it will only use 20 of the existing parking spaces on the lot. That means that only 20 to 25% of the parking spaces will be used on a regular basis. And that's only for our lot proper. We'll have no need to uh, rent any spaces across the street or anywhere else. Because uh, this is gonna create so many additional parking spaces in the lot, there will be no need for student transport vehicles to park on the street to block traffic or to park off site. The parking lot has plenty of spaces for the academy's three small buses and for vans and cabs to maneuver. Also, unlike the traditional neighborhood school, Wincote Academy will not add to pedestrian traffic as 100% of the students and staff will be coming to and from the school in a vehicle. Finally, there will be no outdoor student recreation activities at this site causing noise or disruption. All physical, physical education activities will be held indoors or at an offsite location. Uh, in addition, uh, I will note that uh, we presented to the Planning Commission and some of the uh, residents uh, asked about a small outdoor seating area that, uh, that exists at the property. That will remain, but it will only be used by uh, the staff. It won't be used by students you know, causing any noise or anything else. A few additional points of clarification, if I may. Um, the property will remain taxable. Uh, bringing in revenue to the township. We're not going to be applying for non-tax status in any way. Uh, also, there will be no significant changes to the structure of the property. I'll go back to the uh, picture. The only change that we expect is the uh, clock tower shown here may be removed. Aside from that, the structure as is is going to remain in the same footprint. As stated, uh, the main thrust of our application is for a special exception for a change to the non-conforming use. There, there are, however, a few ancillary items of relief in our application that I can briefly address. First, we have appealed the determination that the school use needs at least six acres. Uh, we appeal that determination because the property is currently non-conforming as the lot size and that non-conformity will continue. Uh, next, we appeal the determination that there is sufficient parking. As we state in our application, the code would require 68 parking spaces. Uh, we have more than that and therefore are in compliance with the code already. Finally, we appeal the determination 
that would require uh, buffering from outdoor play areas. As I said, um, there will be no outdoor play areas, and so therefore no buffering is required. Um, also, I, sh I should note that in each of these areas, we uh, apply for a variance in the alternative. Um, I believe on the call with me tonight are Mark Lincoln's head of the school. Uh, I, I didn't see her, but I think Jane Zekakowski, who's the chair of the uh, board of directors, is also here, uh, uh, or she should have been, I'm not sure. Also in the meeting is uh, Rosemary Forst, who's here on behalf of the current property owners, and we're certainly happy to uh, answer any questions that anybody has. Uh, I have a growing number of questions, but I'll open it up to the rest of the board first. Um, any other questions from board members at the moment, or are they going to pop up as we ask more? Was that your finger over there, Ann? Yeah, yeah. Thank wrap you. Before it. Okay. Yeah, so I do have a bunch of questions um, and comments. Um, you did answer a couple of them, the, the actual acreage. So you're, what, what is required to be six acres is, is less than two acres in reality. Is that right? That's right. And your physical activities, um, so here, here's a school that prides itself on agriculture and uh, tilling the soil and doing all kinds of physical things outdoors. I'm not sure, I, are you changing your program? Well, I, uh, I see Mark has uh, jumped in. Mark Lincolns is the head of the school. I'll allow him to answer. Um, uh, he's more qualified than me. Hi, that's an excellent question and, and an accurate assessment of our, our commitment to hands-on experiential learning. Um, we, we are in year two of an urban agriculture program, uh, which is, is developing uh, very nicely. And that program uh, is situated on another Cheltenham pro uh, property uh, near, near the intersection of Old York Road and, um, and uh, Ashbourne. Uh, it's a it's a property that we um, uh, one of the founders of our school uh, owns the property and is allowing uh, us to use it for uh, as an outdoor uh, agricultural classroom. So that will remain an important part of of our program and our curriculum. Um, and so um, all the space that we need for that program is it, it is there. Um, in terms of uh, uh, um, sports or uh, gym class activities, um, our school has uh, for for a number of years we have used offsite um, locations um, uh, be, be, because we've been in the school and we are in a location right now without a gymnasium. So so we have used offsite lo locations for that. Um, and are, are, are prepared to do so going forward. However, we realize that this building offers rich potential. It's, 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 a, it's a building that has a lot of space and a lot of big wide open indoor spaces. And we have a lot of ideas about how we would like to use some of the indoor space uh, for, uh, uh, for, for um, uh, a, a small gym area, uh, and other physical activities inside, including yoga classes, uh, ping pong, things like that. Um, so there are a lot of indoor possibilities. And as I said, we also are, uh, may, may continue to use offsite locations um, as well. But in terms of your agricultural program, do you foresee um, transporting students during the day to? Uh, Back and forth to off-site locations. Uh, we 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 definitely for, uh, foresee some of that, and it would be uh, not not necessarily on a daily basis, but uh, probably so, uh, several times uh, per week. We'd have the students who are involved in the in the urban agriculture program would be uh, tra transported from one site to the other, as they are right now. And it's working out perfectly fine. Let me say that 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 does, you know, raise or or I guess confirm the concerns that we've been hearing that came up in the planning commission um, about 
traffic because it's one thing when you're on church in Washington Lane or when you're on Old York Road, those are state roads, but you're on a, a very narrow road uh, and residential uh, access as well. And I think that that is a concern that in addition to the morning, afternoon, uh, uh, you know, uh, traffic, ingress and egress, you're going to have this additional one during during the, you know, work week. So, I, okay, I, that clarifies that. Um, let me, I, I was also glad to hear that you're, you're going to be paying taxes and that that won't change. Um, the timing of the, the traffic, um, well, I, you know, we just raised part of that. So, um, Give me, a, give me a minute because um, the, the photograph that you showed, of course, shows the trees all in, uh, you know, with their spring and summer foliage, but most of the school year, uh, those trees are absent. So um, the neighbors uh, will have much more, uh, I guess, uh, visibility and all that. Uh, but you're saying all they're going to see is the the buses and the vans. They're not going to see the students. Well, yeah, and significantly less buses and vans and cars than the previous commercial use that had been there for a very long time. Well, uh, like I mean, like I said in my presentation, there had been you know more than ninety cars on this lot right. and, and neighboring lots. It's going to be right. significantly reduced from that. The difference, and I, I read through your you know you're saying that this will be a positive for the community, but I. And with respect, you know, I, I just, I do want to make sure that your record is accurate. Um, in terms of the commercial aspect in our residential area. So this is what, what they're calling these days a transit oriented area. So you see the train station is right across the street. You see the, um, there are uh, some a pizza place, there is a, uh, uh, a coffee shop. You know, there is a, a residential, com small commercial area right there in historic Wincote. And the fact that this is a private school, these are not neighborhood kids coming, it is a, private school that's going to come use the building and leave without any positive impact to that transit oriented small business area. And I think that does raise concerns that it is not consistent with the previous exception. Okay. And I don't think it's legitimate to say that it is consistent. It really is quite different. And that is a message that needs to go to the zoning hearing board. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's just plain honest that there is no positive impact commercially that was there prior. Uh, and, and it ch does change the nature of the neighborhood. So that, that just is, it needs to be accurate. Um, the other thing that, needs to be noted here, I think, is that this actually adds to the number of schools in a township that already has a lot of schools. Now, I'm an educator by training. You know, I, I, I don't have a problem with schools, except that we're already, we already have a lot of schools. And um, the fact that the previous site where you're going to be continuing perhaps your agricultural part um, has also wanted to and has also been to zoning, as you noted, to preserve educational uses for that site. So we're, we're likely to see more applications there. So I just, again, I want the record to be clear that instead of commercial, we're adding a, another educational use I do not know whether that would stay with the land or not. Um, I don't know if the tax situation could change, 
But again, those are conditions. Um, let me ask, and I don't want to, I don't want to spend too much time on, you know, just hogging the mic, but you mentioned in the application about your food service, and it said, including a well-equipped serving station. I don't know what that means. Maybe you could clarify, please. I, 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 I believe you're referencing, I believe what you're referencing is how we would utilize space in the force building. Am, am I, am, am I, am I understanding? Yes, that's what she's asking. Okay, yeah, yeah, it, it, that's simply a reference to a space in the force building, which would seem ideally suited for, uh, for serving lunches. Um, so that that's well, I'm asking for bit. clarification actually as to how what kind of meal service you expect. Oh, oh, which, oh, which oh, oh part okay. of the question I think that came up in the planning commission about what is the what is the expectation as far as food service deliveries and things like that to you know what, what right. is okay now, now now I understand the nature of the question. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, <laughs> well, uh, we're simply um our um we we provide food we 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 don't have any outside food services coming in to provide uh food to to faculty um or or, or to students um we we do purchase a, a limited number of of items that we make available to students some for free some for sale uh that we distribute to the students um on site for lunch and also uh, for breakfast when they arrive, but there's there's no outside food service. It's just um, what what we provide in house items that we purchase, uh, mostly bulk items from bulk uh, grocery stores. Um. So the well equipped serving station. No, could you just elaborate? I mean, are you talking about a microwave? What are you talking about there? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, uh, several microwaves. Um, and I think well equipped is, was just a reference to there's a specific structure in the building that looks like it would be a good serving area for the way we do lunch, which is very informal, but we have a limited number of items. Uh, students, uh, students are able to use a microwave. Uh, we do not do um, on site. Um, uh, you know, we don't we don't prepare hot lunches. A lot of students bring their own own food. And as I said, some purchase and we also have items um uh, uh that are available for free or for so purchase the, but it's not elaborate yeah. so the bulk items though they're brought by truck what are who, how? they are brought they, they're brought by station wagon well oh, oh so yeah we yeah we don't have anybody delivering uh food items there 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 are no vendors providing food to our school everything okay. comes right now it comes in the back of the station wagon of our business manager who goes to Sam's Club and picks up what we need. <laughs> okay, um, just a final question, I think. Uh, and, and that that really is, um, we hear a lot about the hardship. Um, and I have to ask, I, I know the property has been on the market for quite some time. I don't believe, frankly, because of the location, um, no, I have two questions, but okay. Uh, because of the location being right next to the train station and stuff, I, I don't think that that is the problem. And I'm curious what the uh, what the sale price or is of the uh, of the property. Are you able to tell us what what the price is? Because I I I'm, can't be convinced that this hardship is is. Uh, not self-imposed. Well, initially, I'll say that I represent Wincote Academy, not the seller. Um, the seller did authorize us to file the application to the zoning hearing board. Um, uh, but with that being said, uh, I'll point out that the hardship uh, speaks to uh, uh, the variances which we've requested in the alternative. Um, the initial relief we requested is the special exception to allow for the change in circumstances, which doesn't require proof of hardship. But with that being said, uh, if Rose Marie, I, I think you're on the line. If you want to speak to that uh, on behalf of the property owner, you're welcome to. We have had that property on the market 
since um, I believe it was 16 when we moved away, we moved up to Fort Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been meeting with the realtor every other week. It's been actively on the market. We have had no buyers that have gotten to the point of buying it. Um, we have people that look at it every month. And right. I understand that. Been anyone who wanted to buy it, uh, Wincote Academy is, is, has always been in Wincote and we'd like to them to use our building. Well, and, and as I, 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 I will add, no. concern would be that maybe it's the selling price that is the hardship, not so much the building itself. Uh, we have reduced the price is 1.7, I believe. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what it is now. Thank you. And just one final question. I, I apologize for, again, for, for so much. Um, the neighbors on Cliff Terrace in particular, who are at grade level with your property, yes. whose who's, um, backyards literally back onto your, your property. Um, what, what kind of accommodations are you set to, to make to them to reassure, to give them a, a little additional green buffer or some other uh, uh, reassurances that uh, that their property will be intact and that their noise level and view will be, um, you know, respected. Is there an increased buffer and things like that? Uh, uh, there, to, uh, to, to date, there, the, the, there's been no no discussion of of a buffer. Um, that doesn't mean that we're we're not open to. It. We would certainly be be open to exploring that. Um, but having said that, what I will will just want to clarify is that those properties abut the 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 opposite edge of the parking lot on the opposite, you know, away from from uh, from the building. I don't think, and I. Uh, Rosemary uh, or, or Rosemary, do you know what's currently? Is it what sort of structure is currently separating the parking lot? Is there's, it? there's a fence. There's a fence. It's, it's it's been there forever. There's a fence between the neighbors and our parking lot on Clift Avenue. And, and yeah, go ahead. The other neighbors are not at street level with us. They're much higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I appreciate that. that. I what I what I'm say, saying I think is. You know, houses are used to, homes are used to a few cars. The difference is vans and buses are, are different and shielding with high, high enough green year round would be, I think, uh, a nice, a nice, not, not a bonus, but a, a nice, um, if you want, if you want to change in uh, the character, uh, which I believe this is a change in the character of the property, then then I think the addition of an extra strip of uh, evergreens at a high enough level that they don't need to see during the winter uh, the vans and hear the the vans and all that, as opposed to just you know, commercial. Commissioner, Commissioner, I don't disagree with you, but I think we're sort of in land development as opposed to their zoning. No, we're, we're, no, not at all. We're at con recommending conditions uh, to go to the zoning hearing board. And and what I will say is, I mean, obviously, as Mark mentioned, we haven't looked into that yet, but we're certainly more than more than happy to look into that uh, to the extent that we can uh, figure out where the property lines are in relation to the uh, the, the the existing parking lot. Uh, or if, frankly, if the neighbors would give us permission to plant uh, buffers on uh, on their land, if uh, it's not impossible to do on our land, but we'll certainly look into that between now and the zoning hearing board. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that as as a board, you know, when we start to make our recommendation to the zoning hearing board, we need to make that one of the conditions uh, for approval. Thank you, Mr. Sakawando. It's just a matter of record. Uh, again, this is probably minutia, but uh, I just want to make sure that the applicant is aware as part of their application and what was advertised was that they were seeking a variance in the alternate uh, as a if, if the if the board determined that the school use was not similar to 
what was there before. So I just want to make sure that that's on the record, and I can share my screen if you do if, if you so desire. But we did advertise this as a variance based on your request uh, as part of your application. Thank you. Thank you. Matt, yeah, we you we. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if uh -huh. I could just respond very quickly. Um, uh, we did uh, recommend, uh, request a number of different types of relief, variances being one of them, and we're certainly happy uh, on the record to, I guess, readjust the order of the request uh, first uh, with regard to the special exception and then the variances in the alternative. Uh, but uh, to the extent that uh, to the extent that uh, the zoning hearing board needs that clarified, we're happy to do that. Uh, I'm going to go to you, Matt, in a half a second, but I have to tell you. Um, I have watched this process and I've listened to the assertions and then the changes and the variations. And I feel like the little round ball on a roulette wheel. Uh, things are really spinning and they're not going in a straight line. And I'm a little concerned about this and I'm gonna raise those concerns in a minute, but go ahead, Commissioner Arman. Yeah, I'll let, I'll let you get to it, Mr. Chairman, but I just have a, a very basic question. Uh, in the packet, I see two separate addresses listed. I see 38 East Glenside Avenue, and I see 218 Glenside Avenue. And, and I'm, I just have a little bit of confusion about that. So can someone enlighten me? Uh, and I think Mar Rose Marie can speak to this, but I think 218 is the owner of the property. No, um, the address that we have always used was 218. And um, I don't know how it ever, the, the official address is 38. But we have always used 218 since um, since the 80s, and I don't know why. Okay, you you, you may want to figure that out before you go yeah. to the zoning hearing board. But, well, we, uh, okay. we, uh, our application uh, does include the tax parcel ID, which everybody agrees is correct. So we're, <laughs> we we included both, I guess. But the uh, name of the entity that owns the property uses the 218, but the property records for the county use the 38 East Glenside. We're happy to go with either one. Thank you. I think uh, as a recommend, I'm sorry. I was just going to add that as part of the recommendation for approval, uh, that needs to be clarified and uh, cleaned up, uh, especially for emergency responders. We, we would need to make sure that's in consistent, consistent with the uh, other addresses on that on that block. Agreed. Okay. Uh, any other questions for commissioners? Because Commissioner Rappaport asked half of mine took all my fun away. You make another uh, Franski. Commissioner yeah. Mizell. Thank you. Um, so Henry, you know, given that the usage is educational and you have a lot of kids, so first, um, do we know, or, or uh, I guess, Mr. Lincolns, do you have a limitation to the number of students and the number of staff that would be permitted? I assume you're not taking 60 and then that's a finite number. That is that number. Is there, an, in fact, a finite limit to what you can handle in your in that facility? Yeah, there's there's a limitation not imposed by the facility. The facility uh, is uh, has ample space, um, but in terms of how we configure learning in our school, that 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 would be the determinant. And and really, uh, set, uh, seventy five to eighty would be our our maximum. Students or total with students and staff. Uh, that would be with with uh, with students uh, and and with staff uh, that bring it up to maybe 100 to, to 105. But that would be uh, that's I would say that that's very unlikely. And I'm only you're you're asking for a maximum and I'm giving you. Correct. OK, are there um, do you have a demographics or special needs uh, students in your facility that. Uh, to require uh, different types of support services, et cetera? So um, and in terms of learning support services, yes, we we, uh, we have a number of students who, who do have learning challenges and, and require academic supports. Uh, in terms of, if you're asking related to infrastructure or the physical building, we do not have students that require um, exceptional physical, you know, uh, we we don't have any any children um, uh, that that uh, that have exceptional physical needs that need to be accommodated. Okay. Thank you. And then Henry, I have a question. Two questions for you. Um, given that this is a an educational proposed educational use with children in these age groups, 
I would assume that you would need more EDUs than were uh, originally provisioned for um, the business uh, functions. So do we have any idea what the potential number of EDUs would be required for, for that educational purpose, given that you have kids uh, and obviously different kinds of uh, requirements? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure if Roger is still online, but uh, we, this, this is not on any connection management plan. I'll have to double check and make sure it's on one of the plans because Again, per DEP requirements, if a use is abandoned for more than one year, those right. EPUs go away. So it will require DEP review and approval uh, based on whatever is uh, being proposed. Roger can- I'll just add. online, yeah. And then my other question is, um, given, given our stormwater uh, management uh, and you know flooding mitigation legislation, that building doesn't grandfather in terms of being permitted not you know to to live with what it currently has would obviously have to bring it up to, to code and to requirement correct i believe so I, I mean there will be building requirements as part of any um any uh occupancy uh, uh and scott can probably add to that as well yeah so we're going from a, a b group from business to an e group educational so it's a complete change of occupancy. Uh, so uh, it's going to have to come into 100% compliance ADA. That was going to be one of my questions. Thank you for bringing it up. And, and is that building currently sprinklered, um, Scott? Do you know? Yes. Yeah, okay. there's a sprinkler system in the building. Okay. okay. Let's hear some of your questions. Uh, Mr. Phillips, you were going to answer one for Commissioner Ziegenfeld. Uh, yeah, unless there was any uh, changes or additions to the impervious surface there, it wouldn't fall under the, the current stormwater management ordinances unless changes would require that. Thank you. All right. Those and to that questions point, I'm sorry to interrupt. To that point, as I mentioned, the only change to the outside of the building would be potentially removing that clock tower. There's no additions, no structural changes on the outside besides that. Okay. Um, I want to start at the basics. You to say it's a modification to a, a, the existing non-conforming issue. Um, as Mr. Lynch just mentioned, or Chief, how, how do I address you in this meeting, Chief? Um, Mr. Lynch is fine. It doesn't uh, matter. Um, you're going from a B group to an E group. There's no office in the world it is a school and vice versa. So to say that we're just coming up with a different non-conforming use and it's the same kind of thing, we only need a minor variance, to me on its face seems a bit absurd. Um, I will leave that to the, the legal beagles and I know, I know Mr. Yaza is online, but he wasn't planning to talk about this. Um, but I have difficulty accepting that as a premise. Um, secondly, one of the points I was going to bring up, I'm very, very familiar with the building. Matter of fact, I've talked to Mrs. Forrest a million times in the past, um, and I was optimistic when I first heard about this. And then I saw your appeal on an abandoned stretch where you said, no, we're still using it. And then you bring up the fact that, no, you're going to bus children from this location to another location to do what one of your primary functions is. And I have difficulty understanding the disconnect between the two locations and, and a reasonable usage. But I can't imagine any child with a handicap being able to navigate that building. And if you turn to me and say, we don't have any students like that, I'm going to ask you, if you have another child with a learning disability, which I know you do uh, attend to, and he has a physical disability. Are you going to say to him, you cannot attend our school because we can't accommodate you? If you're going to be a school, as Mr. Lynch said, you have to be able to accommodate ADA needs. Um, and I'm not even getting into the minutia of the, all the other things you mentioned because I have a, too many questions to ask. But how do you get past that first one about saying the school is the same as an office use and then turn around and say, we're going to be a school, but we can't accommodate anybody with a handicap? Uh, ex excuse me, uh, Mr. Pansky. I don't know at what point either uh, 
Eric or I implied that we we were not going to be ADA compliant and weren't interested in that. I, I somebody asked me a question about the demographic currently in the school, and I answered honestly. Um, in terms of we're not we've never turned students away for any disability, and we're certainly not as I, I think we have to be ADA compliant. That's that that's the law. So I accept that as a given. I think any other thinking other than that is antiquated and <laughs> just way out of date and inappropriate. So I did not mean for a moment to imply that we 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 were going to restrict students with certain types of, of disabilities. So well and if I if I could just address your first question with regard to the change in use. Um, we're not saying that an office use is the same thing as an educational use. Um, the township code allows for a change in non-conforming use from one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use uh, where it's demonstrated that it's, a, it's of the same general character. Uh, we think yeah, that right. an educational stop, use is- Stop there for is, a second. Explain the same general character because that's the part where I'm getting lost. Well, and, and it's 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 a non-residential use in a residential district involving people who are coming to um, use the building. But uh, frankly, our, our, our point is that it's going to have much less of an impact on the local residential area than the previous commercial use, which had significantly more cars, that's significantly not the, more that's traffic. Not, that's, that's not the issue in front of us. It existed with all the cars from before and it wasn't a problem. So it's no there's nobody questioning having less cars is an issue or a bonus, there was never a problem before. Well, fundamental to non-conforming use law, generally speaking, uh, townships and, and state law allow for changes to non-conforming use if it's uh, improving a bad situation. Your current zoning code says that this property should be used for residential. So what we're saying is uh, it's not being used for residential historically, it's being used for commercial purposes historically, at least for the last number of decades. Uh, and so what we think we're proposing is something that better matches, better meets the residential district than the uh, current office use. Uh, except for taking exception to a bad situation because no one ever complained about that. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I would love to ask Mr. Sigalongo for a bunch of clarifications, but um, I'm, I'm having real difficulty with moving this forward without objection. Um, there are just, so many things you've thrown in as far as variations um, and the changes in position you've taken as far as other township prop properties you have in the township. I'm just not sure where the bullseye is with Wincote Academy. It's become very, very difficult to follow. Um, Mr. Sik Mr. Sikawangu, could you help me a little bit with, with some of the things they've brought forward as far as this other non-conforming use and how they're in implying that it is basically the same or an improvement or just another another variation on a theme where you had two businesses before and now you're going from a business to a school. Uh, my, my, my recommendation, again, as part of what was submitted, the determinations, in my opinion, are not necessary. The applicant should just proceed uh, with the special exception, request a special exception, basically, uh, which is change of the private school uh, change from a, an office use to a private school. It's 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 permitted by a special exception. I'm not sure why they they they're considering a determination on an issue that's very clear cut. It's it's not. It's a special exception that you should really be going for. Similarly, with all the other determinations, those are not called for. They should just proceed with the requirement. If it's a variance, seek a variance. If it's a special exception, seek a special exception. That's that's my recommendation. Now that clarification helped because what they were asking. And, and by the way, I agree 100% with that. Uh, what, what we're primarily seeking is a special exception. If that wasn't made clear in the application, um, then, then I apologize for that. I didn't draft the application. I'm, I'm running with it now on behalf of uh, my partner, but um, primarily we're seeking the special exception. I think the reason the appeal of the determination was even mentioned in there is because uh, under the uh, municipality's planning code, you only have a certain number of days to appeal a determination. Uh, and if you don't do so, then it's it's sacrosanct, it's locked in. So I think that that was probably just thrown in there in order to make sure that we didn't lose the right to discuss it as an issue. But again, it's the same also applies to the determination that the minimum lot area of six, 
six acres. The ordinance calls for six acres for school use. You're basically saying a determination that this does not apply to this use. That doesn't make sense. Just go ahead and seek a variance. Well, again, uh, we're, we're first arguing that the uh, lot is non-conforming as to lot size, so that it's currently non-conforming as to lot size, and we're asking for it to continue to be non-conforming as to lot size. But in the alternative, we do ask for a variance. So um, uh, your point is a good one that uh, it needs to be understood the order in which we're applying. Um, and uh, we're certainly happy to uh, uh, take any action necessary to make that clear to both this board and to the zoning hearing board. There also does not appear to have been any effort to demarcate or uh, basically delineate all the parking that's available on the lot, considering that you're also proposing a drop off area for for the students. We, we have no clear clarity on how many parking spaces are on the lot. There was no schematic provided or plan provided showing that you actually meet the, zone, the, the parking requirements, even though you're basically saying a determination that you have adequate parking should be made by the board. When you're right, we didn't provide a, 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 a schematic, but I think that, uh, and, and maybe Mark or Rosemary can speak to this, I think that uh, they have a full understanding of how many parking spaces there are, and we can certainly put something together if, if, if that's required to, to show how many parking spaces there are. The, 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 uh, the very initial zoning determination request specified the, the, uh, the number of spaces there. So that's 90 spaces, I believe. So, Again, you showed a, 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 an area, or you did show a picture of the parking lot. The parking lot was not lined I don't know how. Oh, oh, oh on happen. this on on this schematic, it was not lined. Okay, I I, I understand the point you're making. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, Commissioner. But, but reg regardless of that, uh, I think that we'll we'll certainly concede that um, um, you know, we didn't provide any kind of schematic that says you know this is this is where the parking spots are, but instead just did a uh, informal count based on what exists at the property right now. There's a lot of gaps. It's very difficult for me to say that we can support this. Commissioner Rappaport, was there another question you had? Uh, I was just trying to find a way to go forward. Um, you know, perhaps with changing. Yeah, I mean, some, some of the, the presentation, I just, I think we all kind of agree is, is not quite uh, the way we feel is consistent for it to go forward to zoning hearing. Um, but short of, you know, asking the applicant to change that, I think we just need to outline the conditions um, that we feel are important uh, and, and send a, an attorney to uh, zoning hearing so that, uh, you know, some of those conditions are, um, or even if they can be agreed to ahead of time with, with the applicant. And, right. and certainly the conditions that have been mentioned so far this evening don't cause us any concern at all. And we're happy to we're happy to agree to those. Um, I will a thought that just came into my mind is um, uh, if the condition is that um, is that a certain number of parking spaces are preserved and, and shown on a plan uh, in the future, I don't think that necessarily has to be shown prior to going to the zoning hearing board. It's just a requirement that that you know, after fully developed, um, that the uh, that that there are a minimum of so many number of parking spaces. I think that's perfectly appropriate. Henry, when would this come up in front of the HB? It will be on the uh, on the twelfth of oh. June, which is next week. Next week, that's yeah. kind of a short period of time for any of this stuff to get put together. Um, When would the next opportunity be if there were things that were in the way? We do have a meeting also scheduled for the 20, I believe it's the, uh, the 20th. Because that might give them enough time to put together the information that we've talked about. Um, I, I'll tell you, usually it's kind of straightforward as to supporting it or objecting to it, but I feel like I'm, I'm constantly walking through more smoke than's been outside, trying to get some clarity uh, on, on wind code projects. Um, 
All right. And I think, frankly, part of the confusion is that I'm the same attorney who's sitting here who was speaking to you last month with regard to the other property. Um, but for purposes of, of this, you, you have to understand that I'm representing two different clients. The previous client was Jerry Schatz, who was looking to preserve a school use on a piece of property that historically had been Wincote Academy. Now I'm here representing Wincote Academy, who's looking to move on from Gretz College. Uh, I, I don't let don't let the waters muddy between those, um, uh, because ultimately, you know, they're they're separate matters. Mr. Chairman, I, I would also like to say I'm not an educator, but I have concerns about a school with potentially 30, 60 students uh, in an area without any play area or outdoor play area. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, containing kids in an indoor space all day long. Uh, I've had kids here at my home and oh, containing I, I two disagree. kids is not, it's not, I, doesn't work. I anymore. don't disagree with you, uh, Mr. Sikawango. I'm thinking about days like today and saying, you know, uh, yeah, you're stuck inside today. And then they say you're stuck inside all school year. Well, uh, let me, could, could I ask just for, to clarify that question, uh, could I ask Mark to just speak to that? Because that's exactly the situation that WinCode has been in for the last number of years. Right, and 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 I would just invite, I, I think we, we may be all imagining schools that we've attended. And I just wanna point out the uniqueness of the property in question here. The indoor spaces are, some of them are vast. And, and wide open and it's very appropriate. I mean, during, dur during the majority of most school years, um, uh, most school students in the, in the Northeast are inside during gym classes and during, dur during recess. I mean, if it, uh, um, depending on, on weather, um, you, you for, for a good part of the year, uh, indoor spaces are typically utilized for student recreation. And this is a building that, as I said, is unique. It has spaces that can accommodate indoor activities and games. Um, and um, as, as, I, as Eric said, we have been in a situation where, where, where we have been without a gymnasium um, for a number of years and we have accommodated. And I think our students are, you know, are, are none, the, <laughs> none the worse for it. So um, I, I, I don't I don't have a hesitation about that. If it was a typical traditional school building without a gymnasium, I would have a concern. But this is not a typical building. It is a building uh, that, that has 26,000 square feet. And we have a, and it's will have a very it's a small number of students for that space. And uh, there is there are a lot of a lot of creative ways to use indoor spaces for student wellness and for student exercise and for students to get to just get the amount of physical activity that they need. So I just invite you to think about that space. Remember, remember. I, I am familiar with the space. Yes. I'm very familiar with the space. Uh, well, I was speaking to the entire, to everybody yeah. here. Yes. Okay. Um, before we put this forward for recommendation, I'm going to do something I don't normally do at this point, but I'm going to ask if there is any public comment from the adjacent neighbors um, who have had questions before. Uh, I see Gail Post has her hand up. Thank you. Uh, Gail Post, 106 Clip Terrace. Our property abuts the uh, lot. We've been there for 32 years. Actually, my understanding is prior to our being there a while way back, there was a, a barrier of additional trees and ground that abutted the fence, but that was a long time ago and certainly before we, we came on board. So I, I'm not trying to say anything negative about the school. It probably does a great job with the kids that it serves. It doesn't mean that this is the place for it to be. It's like trying to fit square peg in a round hole. When they say things like it's, you know, it's such a cute building, it looks like a school. Well, yeah, but then there's other things that go into education than, than a cute uh, schoolhouse. So I, I appreciate, Mr. Wirt, that you clarified some of the statements you made in the last meeting that were basically um, misconstrued or false. Uh, but there, there's still an attempt, I believe, in the proposal and in this attempt to try to find 
reasons that this would be somehow beneficial, and it would not be on so many levels. And I appreciate uh, particularly Commissioner Pransky and Rappaport, your, your very astute comments about the concerns. We're talking about a space for a school in a suburban community that's basically being set up like it's a city school. But the thing is, most city schools have outdoor play areas that are permitted. So when they say that these kids would not be playing outside, who's going to hold them to it? There have been enough inaccuracies in what they've expressed previously that makes me concerned. Uh, there's, there's no benefit to the community. It is not a neighborhood school. Most of the kids that go there are bused there either because their school districts will not take them anymore because of behavioral or learning problems, or parents are willing to pay a lot of money for this private school. It's not going to serve the community. Uh, secondly, the idea that it's no different, and, and Commissioner Pransky, you had said no different from a business is false, but everything from EDUs to the use. Kids have different needs than office workers. They are Kids are disruptive. Kids need to run around. These are kids, many of them with ADHD, who are going to be stuck in a building. And it's not just, you know, when you compare it to the Mandel campus, it's not the same. There, there's green area around there. It, it's a, and there's a huge, huge separation from the neighborhood. This is, this is trying to take over a third of, less than a third of the space required for a school. Uh, so it, it, there, there's a lot, and I appreciate what, what Commissioner Rappaport said about you know, you're promoting yourself as environmental learning and agriculture, and there's there's no option for it. So finally, I mean, there's a lot more I could say, but um, the idea of getting a variance for this opens the door to other schools. So my concern is that if Wincote Academy were permitted to be there, first of all, they can say a lot of things now, but we won't have the kids play outside or we won't have too much traffic and all this stuff, but no one's gonna hold them to it once they're in. But more importantly, if it ends up being a place that is not suitable and they move elsewhere, they find a better place, a place with land, a place where kids can run around, the variance opens the door to any other change. And there was, I understand, a very careful discernment of what was needed to uh, look at this residential zone and, and to zone areas of the, of the township appropriately. And again, trying to fit a square peg in a round hole, it's it's bad for the community. It's certainly bad for us neighbors, but even if I put aside my own personal needs and how it will affect us, you know, as, as property owners, I don't think it serves the community well. There's, and if, you know, frankly, if the owner would lower the price, I would imagine some lovely other options would, would emerge. So thank you for listening. Actually, the price has been substantially lowered. I was kind of surprised to hear that because I've, I've spoken to a million commercial developers over the years uh, who had questions about price and usage. Um, and this would have been a, a welcome change for them. I'm going to, I'm going to keep this limited now um, as far as not repeating issues or points that were brought up, mostly because now we really have to move this to the zoning hearing board and let them do their job. We just have to decide what action we're going to take. So, Ted, I see your hand up. Emily and Jacob Schwartz, please keep it short, okay, so we can move forward. Oh, 80, I didn't you see you have a hand that's the same color as the clock behind it. I couldn't see it. Okay, Ted. Yes, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for, for uh, putting up with us. Uh, my only concern is not the teaching or the parking lot or any of that. The My concern is a special variance given to them. If they fail and they have to move out, will they, whoever bought, buys the property or moves in, will they need to again go before the, the various boards and seek a variance? Or does this um acceptance allow them to allow a school in there my concern is that if they fail they could allow a charter school to come in there which would change the conditions and or would this allow would they have to come back to the, the board and then say we're changing this i don't want to see this go forward with the property because we we allowed a special variance and I 
please enlighten me. Thank you. Emily. And we will enlighten you that way. Emily. I, I have uh, two questions. One is um, I brought up at the planning commission meeting and nobody really had an answer and I didn't hear anything about it tonight. And that is trash. Where will the trash be located? Who will be picking up the trash? When will they be picking up the trash? I mean, that is something um, as a resident of Cliff Terrace who um, backs up to the other commercial properties in the area, th that's a that's an issue. Um, and I haven't heard anybody mention it. And you know, you're trying to be in a residential area. Um, that is something you need to consider. Um, the other question um, I have is, uh, last at the planning commission, you talked about evening events. Um, if somebody could clarify how many evening events you have per year and what time they end. Okay, yeah, um, evening events through uh, uh, throughout the year. Um, we 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 have four, unless there's some something exceptional that happens uh, for four times throughout the year, um, and um, one of those w ends by six. Um, and the others and at uh, uh, between eight and eight thirty. Okay, and I just one one comment that um, if it this does go forward, I would ask that the commissioners ask that there be conditions. I know that um, I plan to ask that of the Sony Hearing Board as well. Thank you. And I, I believe that the trash question is more a saldo after they get to development. Um, uh, Jacob. If, if I may, just very quickly, we're we're certainly happy to agree to any reasonable conditions like those that have been mentioned so far. Yeah, I'm trying to. I I understand that, and I'm trying to get through these so we can move forward. Jacob, what have you got? understood. Uh, hello, I have um one question, which Mrs. Rapport kind of um edged on, which is the change in the location will also allow students coming um directly from only transportation to attend this school as it is on the the 77 bus line. I'm wondering if you um. If you have any information about that, I'm not sure I followed that. Could you run that again? Uh, yeah, sorry. So um, this new location is um, it is a um, transportation center near uh, Jenkintown and also bus routes coming from Philadelphia, which could change the the type of students who will be attending Wincote Academy. I'm wondering if um. Yeah. You all are prepared for that. There, there's no way we can address that at this point. And it, it's, not, oh, okay. it's not an issue for zoning, that's for certain. Okay. Edie? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Edie? Okay, I'll try to be brief. I may touch on, am I, wait a minute, am I unmuted yet? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, I'll try to be brief, but I may touch on a couple of things that were mentioned before. Um, there was a lot of consideration given to the zoning requirements for schools during the meetings to revise the zoning code that was adopted in 2017, 717, and I believe that these requirements are appropriate for any educational setting. Um, having been an educator for 35 years, I know that the kids were outside unless it was raining, snowing, or extremely cold. So, so to go from a situation where the kids can't go outside, can't go outside does not seem optimal to me. Um, and if this is quest is honored uh, either by determination or variance or special exception, I believe it would encourage other educational entities that may not best serve the interest of the township to say to seek some of the same considerations at other sites. And keep in mind that Wincote Academy is asking to put a school on a site that by code is less than one third the required space. And as said before, if it does move forward, it has to move forward with conditions. Right now, uh, Wincote is saying, oh, we're only going to have 105 students, under five people at most. Um, we're saying they're not going to have outside activities. They say that um, they're not going to that they're going they're not going to be that many buses. If the request is granted without specific conditions relating to school size, outside activity, and other specifics, that Wincote Academy asserts make this makes this a space appropriate for them, a larger school with a larger population requiring outside activities, more buses, and more intrusion on the nearby residential area could move in by right at a later date. 
I think that all these things, if this is going to be, uh, if it's going to move forward, it has to move forward with, with specific conditions about the size and the uses of the site. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, I'm not going to, uh, Mr. Hines, I'm sorry, but I, I limited it earlier because we were trying to move on. So um, I mentioned those who had their hands up when we started this. Um, at this point, I'm going to ask the board what their feeling is on this. Um, I have to tell you, I'm not overly supportive of this at all, but it is a zoning hearing board, which is going to have to make a determination. So it's a question of whether we support it, whether we don't support it, or where you take no action. Um, and although it normally would fall to me because I'm also the commissioner of the ward, I am going to throw this out to the commissioners for a recommendation for a motion or for that matter, even Mr. Sikawango or Mr. Diazio, because you've heard all the concerns here and I'd love to move this in the right direction. Great, let's not all jump off at once. <laughs> uh, Mr. Pransky, what I'll, what I'll say is that the Zoning Hearing Board is an independent body that gets to consider each application and all of the issues that the board raised and potentially others are items that the Zoning Hearing Board could ask questions about, could uh, ask the applicant to uh, testify to, and any, um, generally, any testimony, any relief that is granted in a zoning proceeding is conditioned upon uh, the testimony that is uh, provided at the hearing. So if there are specific areas of particular interest to the commissioners that uh, any of you believe need to be addressed uh, that you don't think are self-evident that the Zoning Hearing Board won't uh, you know, talk about them uh, unless they're prompted to, we can certainly, uh, someone can certainly propose conditions. However, as a general matter, um, if there's not a strong feeling one way or the other, as you all know, one option is to allow the Zoning Hearing Board to do its job, make a decision, and all of those decisions are ultimately reviewed by this board. And if this board feels that the Zoning Hearing Board got it wrong and uh, there's a legal basis to file an appeal, uh, there's always the opportunity to do that. Thank you. I was looking for the right way to say no action, but I uh, commissioner Robin for it. Yeah, um, so two things. First of all, I think we still need clarification from Mr. Sekawangu about whether um, essentially a school use or an exception would run with the land or how that works. And then- yes, He said- so, it Okay, so, so this does open the precedent to other schools. Uh, um, let, me, let me comment there. Um, okay. Zoning relief, runs with the land. Uh, that's that's a fundamental premise. Uh, that said, the the relief that the zoning board will grant will be conditioned upon uh, what was represented in the application and what was uh, testified to at the zoning hearing. So if one school comes in and there's at some point in time in the future, a school that is very, very different that would presumably not be in line with what was testified to um, at the at the hearing. And I won't speak for uh, the applicant or his counsel, but I did hear earlier in this proceeding that they were willing to um, entertain uh, reasonable conditions. And if if a reasonable condition would be uh, the impact somehow of that school or intensity of the school, that could be something that we could have a discussion about. And this is Eric Word. I, I turned my video off because frankly, my connection was a bit unstable and choppy. So I wanted to make sure I was at least able to be heard if not seen. Uh, but I, I agree with what Mr. Diazio said entirely. Uh, the presentation we make to the zoning hearing board uh, will to include representations as to what the use is and, uh, and conditions of the uh, grant uh, of any zoning relief will be tied back to what was presented to that zoning hearing board. If at some point in the future, another educational use wants to come in and use the same property for a different use, uh, and they wanted to change some of those conditions, 
they would have to go back to the zoning hearing board and ask for those conditions to be changed. And presumably they would have to come back to this board and to the planning commission to explain why it's appropriate to make those changes. So although yes, the zoning relief would run with the land, so would all of the conditions. And so would the presentation that we make to the zoning hearing board. But, uh, but to, to add to, to what Mr. Diazio said, yes, we're certainly happy to uh, uh, address any concerns that this board has with conditions. Given all of that, I'm going to recommend to the board that we take no action. Our councils will be there at the zoning hearing board. Um, I'm sure Mr. Sigalongo will be there and any of these issues that need to be brought forth, if they're not brought forth by the residents also, will be brought forth to the zoning hearing board because we're actually way overstepped into their purview at this point. Um, so I'm gonna make a motion for no action um, if I could. Not quite. Not quite. We, I'm, all, I'm always going to make that. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I would agree with the no action as long as our, we are represented by council with some of these things in writing that we have um, voiced tonight. Sure. Would it be beneficial to come up with some kind of writing between uh, the township and us that the township takes no action conditioned upon the following things and that we come up with kind of that list so that we can present it to the zoning hearing board after having been hammered out? Well, that, well, would, that, would, that, would, bring, that would bring up the question I asked earlier. Uh, you're scheduled for next week. Would it be a problem to be scheduled for the following meeting, which is what, Henry, two weeks? You're muted, Henry. That would be two weeks, yes. Okay. That would be enough time. I guess I'll let I'll let Mark speak up for, for himself, but we we would rather get this resolved so that the township is happy or or as happy as it's going to be, uh, rather than trying to rush to uh, uh, to next week. Absolutely. So we would be happy to request a continuance to uh, to work out those details. Agreed. Is that agreeable to the board? I see. It's good nodding, so that's good. All right, so then at this point, we'll what move uh, for no action pending. They're coming back in two weeks for the zoning hearing board. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for Ed's head to move up. So, yes, they won't be coming back before this board. Not before this board. I meant uh, to the zoning hearing board. Essentially, we will have a couple of weeks to work out um, right. some proposed conditions based on uh, you know, I will do my best to go back and review all of the commentary this evening to come up with um, some I'll, some conditions. I'll send you some of mine in writing. Okay, that would but, be helpful. But in the meantime, the applicant needs to also submit a letter uh, agreeing to a continuance. We, we need that in writing, uh, waiving the MPC requirements. Happy to. We could do that tomorrow. And Mr. Wirt, the Zoning Hearing Board will accept an email uh, from you to that point. You don't need to do a formal uh, letter if you don't want to. Okay. Uh, okay. Directly to David Sander, I believe. Correct. That's right. Okay. Happy and just if you for, could, if you could copy Mr. Sekawangu on that request, that would be helpful. Just as a reference sure. point, the uh, the June twentieth meeting has a number of items on that agenda. Uh, the July meeting would be on the tenth. Uh, so far, we only have one item on that agenda. So for the meeting on the uh, on the 23rd, we have, I'm sorry, on the 20th, we have four other uh, items. Just just throwing that out there. Make it July 10th. We're, we're getting your, uh, your hinting at the proper date uh, loud and clear. It's, it's a question of how late you want to stay up. Understood. <laughs> okay. Given all of those contingencies and stipulations, I'm going to move for no action. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Uh, Mitch, see, now that was only 1A. Are you happy? Okay. <laughs> Item 1B. All right. Uh, thank you all very much. You're welcome. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Item 1B, uh, appeal number 23-3726, Clint Matson for 3001 West Cheltenham Avenue, the Chick-fil-A. You haven't heard about that in five minutes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Sikawango, what is the issue here? Yeah, I'll turn it over directly to, to Mr. Prime uh, to summarize the application. That's okay. 
Yeah, sure. Sure. Thank you again for your time. Uh, happy to be back in front of everybody. So the application tonight, this is about a mile from the location we talked about earlier, 3001 West Cheltenham Avenue. It's the Cedarbrook uh, Plaza Shopping Center. I believe it's a formal, former uh, dark Golden Corral restaurant. And you, well, you'll get all this from our engineer in a minute with an aerial to show you where it is. Uh, and we're requesting a number of variances, uh, not use related, but bulk variances from the zoning hearing board on Monday as well. Most of these variances, as you'll see, we kind of have them into groups are really related to kind of how this lays out. It's a pad site to an existing center. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. If not, you'll see it shortly, but it's where the Walmart is, the Planet Fitness, there's a bunch, it's a huge center. So we have an existing site and we're trying to maintain as much of the existing character that the landscaping, parking, whatever we can preserve, uh, the building itself we're not saving, but the kind of the layout and uh, uh, keeping the structure of how it is now uh, in place. But this will be the, the proposals for a new uh, state-of-the-art Chick-fil-A restaurant, approximately 6,200 square feet. Uh, it'll have kind of all the latest bells and whistles uh, that our newest prototypes have. Everything that we could incorporate in, into this location is being incorporated. And uh, as such, it has you know some relief required. We were before the planning commission a few weeks ago. I think it was the 22nd of May. Uh, and we they made some suggestions. I think it was a pylon sign that we agreed to delete. They wanted to see our storage shed, which, hold, which holds some site cleanup items, salt, road salt, things like that, shovels. Uh, get that out of the front yard. So we, we have a, a plan kind of showing those suggestions that the Planning Commission made. And we'd also happily take any suggestions that this board might have uh, before we proceed to the zoning board, hopefully next week. I do have a, um, Eric Glocky, our engineer, uh, Collier's Engineering and Design. He's on the Zoom as well. And I'm going to turn it over to him, let him show you the aerial so you can kind of see where the site is, uh, where it lays out. And then as well as our site plan, which I believe from our conversations uh, earlier in the week, he has some of these things delineated so you can see the changes that the Planning Commission had recommended. So you can kind of make your own decisions and then we'll proceed uh, from there. Any questions that the board has, we'll, we'll go from there. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. And uh, if, if for any reason that you can't hear me, feel free to stop me. I can repeat anything. Uh, my name is Eric Glocky. I work for Collier's Engineering and Design. And for about the last four years, um, I've been a design consultant for Chick-fil-A, uh, working on a variety of remodels and new stores in the PA, New Jersey, Delaware region. Um, I'm going to move to share my screen here. So as, as Tyler mentioned, um, we'll just do a quick high-level introduction. I'll try not to repeat too much of what he said, and then I'll walk through the variances um, and relief that's a part of our application, and then open it up to the committee for questions. I can provide further detail. Um, you know, we can steer, steer it from there. So this is an aerial of the site. I have the plan underneath quickly, but uh, this is uh, Cedarbrook Plaza Shopping Center again. This is the- yeah, Eric, we, we cannot see your shared screen. Oh, hold on. How about now? It's coming up. Thank you. Okay, you can see the area, correct? Yes. Okay, sorry. Uh, so this is the Cedarbrook Plaza Shopping Center, uh, the existing Golden Corral. Uh, what we're proposing to do is we're going to demolish the existing 9,000 square foot Golden Corral. And in its place, we're going to construct a 5,200 square foot uh, Chick-fil-A restaurant and drive through uh, The, the drive through is a conditional use uh, in part of the zone. There are six conditions that are a part of that. We're compliant with five of the six. Uh, one of them being a part of our relief for tonight is the drive-through that's located in the front yard. <clears throat> the Then moving, I'm going to zoom in here if I can. Uh, staying with the principal building here, we're, we're within the principal, the, the envelope of the existing Golden Corral. Uh, this parcel has a 40-foot front and side yard setback. That's to all property lines. Uh, mm -hmm. So as you can see, our building is located within that. So we're going to be asking for a 20 and a half foot setback to the front yard and a 17.1 setback to the side yard for the principal building. Uh, Tyler did mention the Planning Commission spoke about the accessory storage structure as well as the pylon sign. That's numbers one, five, and nine as annotated on this plan as well as in the packet. I'll speak to them as they are laid out here and then we'll briefly touch on where they've been relocated. But to the to the uh, front yard of the building, to the towards Cheltenham Ave, we have the accessory storage structure. It's a mason block finish enclosure. Uh, it's roof and it's for storage of seasonal items. Being an accessory structure, 
Um, we are located in that front yard setback. That 13.6 is the relief we're requesting. Mr. Glock, could you slow down a little bit, please? Yeah, no problem. Sorry. Thank you. I apologize. So that accessory storage structure, again, around the one and five here, that's also going to apply to a 15-foot setback for uh, all property lines, any accessory storage structure that is. So we're kind of doubling up with the variance relief request there. That 13.6 applies to the front yard setback and the property line. The storage structure then also uh, applies to the 15 foot setback that, is that goes against the principal structure. So a storage structure and accessory structure on the property can't be within 15 feet of a principal building. We're requesting a 10.6 with its current location. Again, that's the original application as presented to the planning commission. Does that storage structure have either refrigeration or cooking function? No, sir, nothing. Um, it is uh, purely for, for seasonal storage items. Okay. Jumping across the front of the building, across the main drive aisle, I'll move to our trash enclosure. The trash enclosure, again, applies as an accessory structure. So again, that 15 foot setback to any property line applies. That, as a, we're showing a five point, we're requesting a 5.1 foot setback to the side property line there. That also applies then doubles for the side yard setback of 40 feet for the overall parcel. Moving south on the site, we move to number eight here, which is our face-to-face -face canopy. That's where our order point is gonna be taking place on the drive-through. Uh, within this zone, we're permitted uh, no signs greater than two square feet that are advertising for a menu or for business hours for that matter. So we're requesting relief for two 20 square foot, each of them being 20 square feet. Uh, menu boards, just your typical menu board for at an order point. Staying with signage at number nine here. Again, this was as presented at the Planning Commission as part of our application. Uh, we have a 15 foot high, 50 square foot pylon sign. We're requesting relief not for the size of the sign, but rather the number of signs on a parcel, a freestanding advertisement sign. There's an existing sign across the uh, fully signalized inter intersection uh, between us and the Ross uh, Commercial Center, the existing pylon sign here that serves the adjacent tenants, uh, but it does not have room uh, as, a, as part of the Chick-fil-A uh, proposed lease here. So again, we're asking for a second freestanding sign as presented in the original application. Yeah. Lastly, we have four building mounted facade signs in this district being within a shopping center, a tenant is allowed two facade signs. We're proposing one for each face of the building, a total of four. All of these are compliant with the size and height requirements allowed within the ordinance. Simply, this is a request for the number of facade signs to be allowed. I know I rushed through some of the beginning stuff. And again, I'll present you know, any additional questions, additional details, but that, that is the original application as proposed to the Planning Commission. I can briefly show the changes that would happen based on the Planning Commission's comments. So I'll highlight the base plan itself is still here, but this accessory structure that we're showing in the front yard is gonna be relocated to the rear of the trash enclosure. It's gonna become one unit itself, all built together. So we're gonna be modifying, we would be modifying the relief that we're requesting. We'd be removing that front yard uh, relief for the accessory structure. We would be changing this 5.1 setback to as effectively count as a 2.7 foot setback uh, to the side property line. Um, so we would be modifying the variance as well as getting rid of one. And then the pylon sign uh, based on the Planning Commission's comment and with our uh, development team is acceptable to be removed. So we'd be removing that variance as well. So with, with that, I'll, I'll yield my time to the committee for um, any questions uh, relative to the site and operations. Um, however, I can assist the application here. Thank you. Uh, let me just toss it out to the group. Are there questions? I'm sure Commissioner Zygmunt felt that. So. <laughs> Mr. Glocky, were you in the earlier meeting when we discussed the, uh, the expansion into the uh, the second drive-through lane in, in the property, it, it was a mile away. 
I am familiar with the okay. uh, with the application. So, so part of the discussion um, was um, how to control the traffic, you know, within um, driving within, you know, the the other properties in the area and that kind of thing. I don't know whether um, you've done or observed things, you know, in, in terms of, you know, a mall traffic study to get a sense of how the circulation in and out is going to work. We've had a lot of challenges with the other property with respect to, you know, getting in and out of the, um, of the, the, the mall area and that kind of thing. And there's been congestion. So I'm wondering uh, whether you have some provisions or you have some assessment done on this property. And obviously you don't have the same conditions, but I raised the issue before about, do you have surrogate kinds of properties that you could use to be able to evaluate what kinds of conditions or what kinds of exceptions you might need to ask for? Understood. So, so I will, I will speak that there is a, there's an overall uh, PennDOT application that's going on with this project. Um, that we're still, you know, the early stages working through. Um, but I, I think your question is more geared towards the internal um, as part of a shopping center circulation. So I'll, I'll speak briefly to, um, you know, to kind of what the benefit of this, um, you know, proposed layout. You know, this, this is the current prototype that, uh, you know, Chick-fil-A is having, you know, we're trying to roll out everywhere we can. So, you know, this, the stacking that's proposed here is approximately 34 cars. Okay, that's between two lanes. I know you say we're 34 cars. 34 cars. Yeah. So that we're showing through three lanes, but only two of those are drive-through function. The third is a bypass lane. That's quickly, that's for the person who's got a screaming kid in the back seat and they need to they need to get out. They, they're not committed to the drive-through. It's at no point do these lanes merge. All right. So um, if you're ordering in lane in lane B, I'm gonna say that's the middle lane that you're seeing you're staying in lane B the entire time. A team member from, uh, from, the, from the building itself, it's no longer a window. There's a, you know, it's a Tormax door, similar to walking in your, your local grocery store. They're gonna be facilitating those orders um, at, the, at the meal delivery uh, beneath that canopy that's on the, the planned south side of the building here. Um, so, you know, we're, we're providing a maximum stack that's, you know, Chick-fil-A prototype as well as the fact that we don't back into, um, you know, our queuing isn't an immediate turn um, into the shopping center. So, you know, we have some internal room for, you know, overflow as well as, uh, you know, sufficient parking for this uh, to facilitate, uh, you know, customers entering the building. Uh, and and how many in-store, in you know, seating facility do you have? Uh, this is a 74 interior seat. 74? 74. Correct. And we have an exterior seat, uh, was it 12? Sorry, 12. So it's a net uh, 86 on that, on that is correct. Okay. And we have had this, uh, this plan in front of, we had, we had a pre-application meeting of sorts with the town professionals and um, we, we have heard and um, heard a lot of, a few of those comments and, and uh, are, you know, we're, we're ready to work, work forward uh, during the land development process to come up with the best uh, signage and striping that we can do um, to, to promote that, you know, safe flow of traffic. You, you uh, also didn't participate in that earlier meeting. There was a lot of discussion about landscaping and about trees to create something that's a little more amenable than mm -hmm. just hard, scrap, you know, concrete and, and not, nothing that makes it feel like, like, uh, you know, a, a kind of a, an open and friendly space sure. when you're sitting. And, and so I'm wondering, do you have renderings that would show how that's gonna be landscaped and, and to try and make um, the, the use of that property a, a little less sterile of and course. a little more welcoming? Of course, I, I have, um, while we haven't submitted for land development yet, I, I would say that we have a, um, I do have a, a landscape plan that is a is draft form, um, which we'll be making that submission after. And I'll also, the, the first, I think, key note here is we're reducing the impervious on the site. And we're adding green area about approximately uh, 4,200 square feet. Um, so if you give me a moment, I'll, I'll pull up that landscaping. But um, yeah, we will be, we will be planting uh, throughout all the green area we're creating um, and disturbing, uh, you know, rejuvenating existing plantings, not just, you know, accepting what's there um, currently. 
one of the one of the questions I raised before, and okay, well, let's look at this first. That's right. And, and I, I will say this is a draft format because we haven't prepared our, our land development submission yet. No, I un understood. We're just trying to get a flavor yeah. for, you know, kind of like the amenities that make it less sterile and actually more welcoming and, and more a reflection of a suburban community. I understand. So we're 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 going to really emphasize the the because of our front yard setback um, and being within that front yard, we're, we're going to emphasize the the landscaping at the front of the, between us and Shelton Ave um, to improve that, as well as the shopping center right in right out entrance that's um, just planned north of our building. Uh, we're going to rejuvenate that existing planting bed there and screen our trash enclosure. Um, obviously, that'll change based on where we have the accessory load um, store structure behind it. But uh, what planting we have available to us, we will uh, we will utilize. Now, in putting this facility within an you know one mile of the other, we kind of talked about you know are you going to maintain and you know Mr. Prime seems to think that there's more than adequate demand and capacity for it to to, to grow and and be both will be fully you know fully occupied and fully utilized. But I'm wondering, you know, do you envision um, the amount of business that you're not going to be poaching or drawing business away because you're, you know, quote, quote, in a different location that's in close enough pro proximity that you're, in fact, um, this can stand alone as opposed to drawing business away from your other facility. Is that something that you've, you've calculated or factored in? I wouldn't suggest that I've calculated or seen those numbers to me, but I will say in experience that we have, um, we have executed sites similar to this. Um, and I, I think it goes in the, its best interest for, for Chick-fil-A um, and their operators and employees not to, not to, uh, as you, as you said, cannibalize um, existing business, but rather to improve uh, the functionality and uh, the customer experience um, in that region. I think is probably the way I would answer that. And it, the other facility, you know, in the drive through lane, you, you submitted for 13 variances. Here you're doing a full facility and yet you're only submitting for 10 variances, at least in this concept. I'm wondering if you've, you know, you've uh, actually taken the, the issues into account because it seems to me it's a more modest set of variances and you know i guess perceived hardships and i'm wondering how you know a complete uh facility from start to finish gets less variances or, or less concerns so help me understand that yeah I'll, I'll, i won't speak to um to their spite their their site in particular i i've worked on other remodels before um i'll say personally i welcome new stores because they give me a chance to use a blank canvas uh, the remodels are limited in nature because of the fact that they are remodels. Um, we're limited to we're limited to the uh, to the paper we have to work with. Um, and I, I know that our goal and our objective is to provide first the, the, the customer experience for safety and for um, you know for uh, you know, optimization. So um, I, I won't speak to the thirteen variances and the difficulties they have. But um, I have I have experienced on other sites um, the sort of issues I'm sure that they are here. So Henry and Roger, the other thing I I add here is you have 74 inside seats. Uh, the EDUs that are going to be required for that certainly are not in a any connection plan that I would anticipate. I'm, so I, I'm wondering if that's an issue as well as if there are other things that you've seen. Um, that required, you know, more scrutiny before. Um, just uh, again, the number of variances seems modest considering that it's a redo. So, if you, either one of you want to weigh in, I'd appreciate it. I, I, I can start with that uh, if you'd like. And re uh, referring to the previous plan that we saw in the in the last meeting, they were looking for waivers from land development, not variances from the zoning code. Okay. They've already been through the zoning process. Um, and then secondly, to the EDU question, that's correct. They are not on a, a current connection management plan. So that will have to be worked out going forward. 
but that again is a separate issue to zoning. Okay. I'll yield. yield. Commissioner Armin. Yeah, th thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, and this this may be more of a land development uh, question, but uh, if you'll indulge me, um, I, I, I'm I'm a little confused about the circulation around the site. So the the way I see this, th there's an ingress and egress uh, at the top of this um, uh, drawing rendering. That, that brings you between the store and the and the trash receptacles. Um, and if you're coming in, you, it looks like you're going past the, the handicap uh, parking and, and coming right into where people are exiting the, the drive-through. Sure, sure. And just seems to me that that, that that may be a recipe for, for disaster. Um, and, and then in order to get to the, to come from that uh, entrance, and get to where you would start to go through the the drive through. Uh, I'm not sure how you would how you would navigate that. Uh, sure. To be, to be honest. So so we do have we do have two accesses to the site. Correct. The 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 plan north side is a right in right out on Cheltenham Ave, and then to the south is is a fully signal, signalized intersection. So coming. Um, what, what point, uh, Eric. Point right. to me where, where, with your cursor. Yeah, I think this this will help. This will help actually better. Yeah. The, the building's close enough. The, yeah. <clears throat> so this is Mount Pleasant and Cheltenham Ave. Right. This, this is our site, the Golden Corral. So the, and then to the plan north is a right in, right out. So I'm not saying that the, I'm not saying that's going to be the first access is going to be the one. But if you're coming this direction, you'll be entering the site. Um, sort of where our drive-through is located. I'm going to flip back to the plan. So this drive-through is facilitating traffic rather well for the for the person coming on off of Mount Pleasant and Cheltenham Ave. They can make the easy left and the easy left coming back in. I understand the yeah. concern is coming from the right in, right out. Um, this could be addressed by um, potentially additional, you know, directional signage um, for, for directing drive-through access. Um, we, we've used that on several sites before um, to keep traffic um, circulating. You know, we don't want anybody coming through this one way in the wrong direction, right? Uh, right. So, you know, we, we can have that that worked out, you know, definitely during land development to the, to the satisfaction of the township and, to, you know, professional staff. Um, but the, the one of the concerns I was brought up in a lot in the pre-application meeting was the drive through the exiting, correct? Um, that it was best to be exiting towards the fully signalized, you know, controlled intersection. Um, so what we're carrying now, um, you know, through this zoning application process, uh, are, are these signs simply, you know, directing drive through to exit towards traffic. That's what we're holding right now, aware that we have an issue um, or a comment to satisfy um, during land development. Um, and, and this is not, you know, it's not uncommon a condition for especially our shopping center pad sites um, to, to have traffic this way. Okay. I, I think it's something that uh, when you get to land development, you're gonna have to sharpen your pencil on because because I, I see the, the um, entrance from, I don't know if it's north, south, east or west, but from the top of the rendering um, coming in towards the exiting, the, those folks exiting the drive-through. But, e but even if you pass the entrance uh, on on the bottom part, you have sort of a confluence of at least three, maybe even four directions of traffic at that one location, uh, and uh, it, it looks like it could be problematic. Uh, so anyway, just just a comment. Thank you, Commissioner Thank you. Lewis. Uh, yeah, let me pick up with thank you. Let me pick up where uh, Commissioner Armand just finished off. So I use this uh, ball quite often. I'm very concerned about entering and exiting, specifically Mount Pleasant. Entering Mount Pleasant off of Sheltonham and Mount Pleasant into yes. the ball. Yes. Going in is horrific. Coming out is horrific. Mm. Because what what you have at one point is 
traffic coming from the Ross, from K and G. Then you got the traffic coming from PFFCU, uh, the grocer. Fresh grocers, yes. That is a major bottleneck today. And if I can avoid it, I will. I'll enter off of uh, uh, Wadsworth Avenue. Now, if you exit onto Sheltonham Avenue, that's a yield sign currently. And folks are flying up and down Sheltonham Avenue. Um, I don't know if the folks yielding out of the parking lot will ever get out of the shelter. So, as Matt said, um, you may need to sharpen your pencil a little bit, um, take a closer look at that. But I'm telling you now, traffic today is a major bottleneck there, in and out. Under That's understood, not. and and the. The only thing I can offer now is that, is that PennDOT has shown interest in this application. Um, so, so it is our traffic engineers, um, you know, position that, that we will have to, uh, like you said, sharpen our pencils and include that in our yeah. development. So with that said, all the traffic that's going to be brought into the mall, um, have you heard anything from the other businesses or mall management as to how all that traffic may impact their businesses. Has that been talked about at all? Has that come up? Well, with our, I can say that, you know, our parcel is a part of the, uh, the, the, two, the two buildings that I'm pointing to here, the uh, 9,300 uh, square foot retail. And they're aware of our application and the, and the tenant itself. Um, so the, 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 I, would, I would speak to them alone. Okay. You mentioned early on, someone did, about this is going to be the state-of-the-art Chick-fil-A with a bunch of toots and whistles. Um, can you share what some of those toots and whistles are? Uh, one, and then I have a follow-up question to that. Um, sure. I, I would probably... Um... I probably I would probably go back to the way that this drive-through functions compared to our existing stores, um, and, I, and I speak mostly to the remodels of um, they're, they're different, the, just what they're able to do. Um, this being a no-merge drive-through, uh, multi-lane fulfillment, um, you know, during peak hours, uh, these canopies are are they, they're um, fanned, they're heated, they're screened um, sufficient for for rain and and sun. Um, so they'll have team members and, you know, out there in person. I'm sure you've had that at your other Chick-fil-A's. I don't believe it's, it's unique to just the new store Chick-fil-A's. Um, but this setup is, is best operative for the team members themselves and for the customer experience uh, to facilitate a quick, you know, quick experience in the drive through um, so that we can, we can alleviate traffic pressure um, at the same time. Um, I, I don't, I don't really have a, uh, I guess a bells and whistles beyond that. Um, but the with the with the prototype that we have um, unveiled here, uh, that this is, you know, this is the most important piece is the, is the function of the drive through. Okay, thank you. Um, can you speak to on a high level um, your environmental plan? Your environmental plan um, keep the area clean. Um, how you plan to sustain that? Because uh, Old Country Buffet was a horrible neighbor. And our Senate office got a lot of complaints about them and trash and um, all the parking, all the cars parking and dumping mm -hmm. trash themselves. So can you speak to that at all? Yeah, uh, the, you know, like our, our landscaping, um, it's, it's, Typical for us to guarantee landscaping for a period of time. Um, so I speak to you know keeping our green areas green, I guess, um, and as well as um, you know, the operators that you know I've met with in person and, and stores I've experienced and um, you know hands on uh, in discussions with them that, that they take the the appearance appearance of the stores um, you know as as a just up there with you know customer safety and the drive through. It's it's how they present themselves. It's the my pleasure. Um, it's the Chick-fil-A experience and the expectation for the team members and the operators to uh, 
to maintain the uh, maintain the site. I think I have one last question, and you may not notice this may be an operational question, but uh, do you know if there's any plan to address um, kids coming into the facility at a certain time unattended at a certain age? It seems to be an ongoing issue with these fast food places where they're uh, implementing policies to uh, not allow certain age kids unattended to come in at a certain time. Any plans to do that? It's not something I'm aware of. Okay. Um, that's it. Thank you. Okay. This this is in your ward, isn't it, Dwight? Yes, it is. Uh, any further comments from commissioners? I don't see hands. Only the comment, and I've said this before, they got the best chocolate chip cookies in the world. <laughs> so, so, so noted. Um, that will be relevant at the zoning hearing, <laughs> especially, if, especially if they bring bags of them. Um, <laughs> Duly noted. Um, all right. Uh, given that, um, if there aren't any other questions or issues for commissioners, I will leave it to Mr. Lewis to make the motion, if you would so like. Um, do we want to take action? No action? What do no. we want to do? I don't think we have any action we have to take. I think it's a simple no action. Yeah, no act, no action. All right, I'll make a, um, I'll put it on the table and make a motion for no action. We have a motion for no action. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, Aye. We, we've knocked off two items. This is great. All right, let's clear the shared you. screen. Can we clear the shared? There we go. Okay. Uh, Mitch, 1C. <laughs> Appeal number 233727, Harold James for 7620 Oak Lane Road. Henry, if you're still awake. You're muted. Henry. My apologies. Yeah, so this, this application is basically going through the process to right some wrongs, so to speak. Uh, they, they started construction without any approval uh, back in 2000. 21, we issued a violation notice uh, in the midst of the construction. Uh, the applicant still continued with the construction and uh, basically constructed a structure over their swimming pool that's over the building coverage requirements. Uh, it doesn't meet the setback requirements and uh, did not get any inspections or approvals. Uh, the applicant's counsel is, is online, but uh, if you'll indulge me, <laughs> Unfortunately, the, the hour is late, but if you would indulge me, I wanted to share my screen, show, show what the changes were um, or the improvements were real quick, if that's okay. Sure, knock yourself out. So this screen shows uh, the property. Um, again, this is on the right side is Rock Oakling Road. Uh, and the back part, this is where the existing pool is. So this was Sunday, May 31st, 2020. Um, again, that's another picture in 2020. 2021, March, uh, 2022, 2021, June 17th, uh, pillars went up uh, for the structure. We issued a violation uh, notice shortly afterwards. Uh, actually, it was in July. Um, uh, and that's what we ended up with as of as uh, shortly after. So the they they got a violation notice, but proceeded anyway. Um, Mr. Sikawanga, let me interrupt for a second. They got a violation notice. Were they given a cease and desist? I believe I believe so. And yet they, they proceeded. Yeah, they proceeded accordingly. So they were never the the pillars were never inspected as far as depth of pour or the concrete or anything else. Nothing was ever inspected. Uh, again, from a front side, this is what the uh, structure looks like. Now, I understand. I understand. So those are what, just blocks on the surface? Uh, we don't know, because uh, we've never 
we never inspected. I, I'm, I'm with you. All right. So just the more I ask the, the more concern I'm going to get. So all right, continue, the please. Council for the applicant is uh, is online, so he can share a little bit, uh, and so we can move on. This okay. got a recommendation for denial before the uh, planning commission. Okay. I understand that. Um, who is going to defend this or speak to it? I don't see anybody jumping up and down to do that. Who's the yeah, council? Harold was online. He must have fallen asleep or. But yeah, he knew, he, he knew it was a good night to be here. Um, I would, it's not my word, it's, I believe it's Dan Norris's, but I'm going yes. to make a suggestion, Commissioner. Go ahead, Norris. Brad. You, you can state it better than I can, but I know where we're going with this one. Uh, considering they were given a notice to cease and desist, considering they did not honor that and continued to build, Considering that given the unknown issues with the construction, it could pose a significant safety hazard both to the occupants and the neighbors, neighbors I would not only recommend that we send counsel uh, to this zoning meeting, but I would have him suggest that they be asked to tear it down and yeah. start from scratch uh, if they continue to want to continue to build it so that it can be inspected properly from the ground up and we know that the foundations are in place properly. Um, Start from scratch if they get approval. It's it's it doesn't well, mean they'd have, they'd have to come back and get approval. But my right. point is, if they choose to, they're going to have to start from scratch. That that structure has to come down. And if we force them, or not force them, but if we're going to tell them they have to remove this and all that, they're going to come in for a demolition permit too. Well, of course, and don't don't forget we triple fines for things that were done without permits. Absolutely, yes, sir. Uh, is there any further discussion on this one? Because they really picked the right night to come in on this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then we have a, a motion for vehemently denying this and defending. Um, yes, all, I so move. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Let me get back to my agenda now. All right. Um, that was the quickest one here. Item 1D, appeal number 2337-28, Norman Cooper for 1114 Stratford Avenue. Henry, give me one to smile about. Today. Sure, this was an application before the uh, Planning Commission. The Planning Commission voted to take no action. Uh, the proposal is for to add a garage, a gym, an enclosed pool uh, to the property. And the applicant is also seeking some kind of reasonable accommodation. Uh, the applicant, Mr. Cooper, is online to share a little bit about what they're proposing before the zoning hearing board. Good evening, uh, zoning board. Um, I don't know how y'all do it. It's 11 o'clock and y'all still seem like y'all can go on forever. I'm a four o'clock riser, so it's kind of late for me. Um, like like Mr. Her like Mr. I'm sorry, I apologize. Your name is Sekowango. Sakamanju. Henry is fine. Yeah. Henry, I'm sorry, Henry. Um said um I put in for a um with my with my engineer. I believe he was on earlier, but I believe he dropped off. Uh my funds probably ran out. Um <laughs> being <laughs> it's eleven o'clock. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for this jokes, but I'm not used to being up this late. Um so uh the the application was for a indoor pool with a small indoor gym in a um in a in a uh, attached garage. Um, during the planning commission, um, one of the things that I think they couldn't get a good view is I didn't have I guess I didn't have good aerials. So what I did was um, I flew up a 4K drone. And I do have pictures um, to show the area that I think wasn't properly represented when I was on the planning commission. If this commission um, or if this board would like to see some some um, pictures and and I guess I think one of the the big the big questions was how does it affect and how does it kind of go in line with a lot of the other structures in the um, like in that surrounding um, area. So I think the pictures would show how a lot of the older, a lot of the other properties, although I understand with the grandfather clause, um, they they kind of back up to the property line. How one of the big issues I believe on here is the setback, how the adjacent properties back up to the 
property line, so I didn't I didn't think it would it would be a big hindrance. Um, so the the I believe the coverage area is over by two point seven percent. I'm not I'm not sure how how big the board is on going over. I believe the maximum is twenty percent, and my proposed area is twenty two point seven percent. Um, the setback, um, I believe the required amount is 25 feet and um, similar to other garages, actually some, some garages are less, I think our setback um, is requested as 10, is, is 10 feet. Um, would the board like me to share my screen so I can um, show you? So far I have no visuals to be able to understand. I'm sorry, I'm there. sorry. So I'm gonna click on share the screen. Um, I'm not sure how this works. Bottom center of your screen. Okay, share right there. So this is the uh, proposed, which has the property. Um, if you look at the bottom, it has the proposed two car garage, proposed gym, and a pro proposed swimming pool. Those are all additions that, are, that don't exist currently? They're not existing currently, but if I show you the pictures, most of that area currently, that area used to be a, um, I believe they call it like a, 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 a horse carriage. So that area is um, covered um, right now with masonry. Um, but I, I believe since the horse carriage was taken down before I was the owner, um, I guess any use to that expired. I'm not, I'm not too sure on how like the, the terminology for it, but whatever use was there since I believe it was, it, it's been going for a certain amount of time that that use doesn't exist anymore. So if I could show some pictures that I took with the drone, I think it, it would help the board see. Sure. Okay. Can you see this? Not yet. Uh, did your screen sharing. You're still sharing the, first, the same screen you had before. I think you may need to stop sharing what you're sharing and then re I'm, go to the next. All right, so stop sharing. Uh, share screen. Okay. All right, so if you, so, this is one of the. This is like the left corner of the property. So if you see at the top, that's my neighbors. Um, that's their garage, and if you see kind of up in the high point, that's another garage. My other neighbor is building a huge structure in the back, but I'm pretty sure that, you know, that's permitted and stuff. But if you see kind of down at the bottom, that's um, the masonry area where the, um, the old uh, horse carriage used to be. Um, right now- Is that, just, was that a carriage house? Is that what you're referring to? I'm sorry, a, a carriage house, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so that was where the carriage house used to be. Uh, and I have a numerous pictures that I took with the drone. Um, this is the, the right side of the property. And if you can see, in the, it's a lot of bushes right there, but there's also a neighbor, a neighbor house or a neighbor garage that just about five, five feet from the property line. Um, really none of the properties around here. Um, I understand with the, the uh, zoning that is required, but none of the properties around here have setbacks of 25 feet. And let me just, I could just scroll through real quick of some of the other pictures I, I took to yeah. kind of kind of give a visual. Um, so this is just the front line. Um, this is a bigger picture of where the carriage house used to be. That's the front lawn. That's just the neighbors. That's a more of an aerial shot on kind of, and that's, this is really where a lot of the um, development would, would be on. So it would be, tearing this up and kind of building on, on top of it. So it, it's, it's not um, taking on new areas on the property. Um, let me just scroll through a couple of these other pictures. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Thank you. M Mr. Cooper, sure. um, obviously you have uh, a lot of neighbors with so sort of similarly adjacent type buildings. Um, ha have you talked to any of your neighbors about the project that you're planning and get getting gotten any feedback from them, whether they're on board, whether they're uh, not. Believe on board me, once once those we have a big, um, I'm gonna call it a 
a, a dog walk area. So once mm-hmm. those once those signs went up, um, as soon as I get out of my car, the neighbors ask me, and a lot of them say we can't wait to see a pool. Um, there there hasn't I haven't had one opposition yet. <laughs> um, and and it, you know is is is. I, I haven't had one opposition. I'm be honest with you. Like I'm, okay. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure all the information to this hearing, the um, the planning commission and the the uh, future zoning zoning board um, is, is on those is on those flyers. So yep. so so um, most of the neighbors around here are voiceful. So I'm pre- I'm pretty sure um, they would probably be online right now with their hand raised. Um, but no, I haven't okay. had I haven't had any opposition. And like I said, if you can see on the picture now, there's there's, you know, people are right. build, pe- people are building around here. Um, it's probably unique for a a pool um, with a, a gym area. But um, I didn't want to go into it too much because it, it is after talking to my engineer about the reasonable accommodation. I think um, when I was doing a reasonable accommodation, I was thinking of it. So I'm a uh, Navy civilian and, and my fiance is a disabled vet and we have a aut- autistic kid in here. And I, when I, I guess when I was doing the application, I was thinking of reasonable accommodation. Um, I was also disabled in a motorcycle accident. I was probably thinking that a reasonable accommodation for something like this would fall in the, in the uh, category. I'm not sure after going to the planning commission if that type of handicap falls into a reasonable accommodation. Um, well, I I don't know that I could get into the legalities of that, but but it it, it sounds like your motivations are are well placed, right? Okay. Um, yeah. So, so that that's that's fair. I, I just wanted to know if you had any any pushback from from the neighbors. No, so I have I haven't you, had you, you you answer you answer my question. I, okay. I certain I certainly appreciate that. Okay. All right. So we have a sense now from the aerials and the picture of what you want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of this. You can stop sharing the screen if you want. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. Um, there's a lot of this, which obviously is not consistent with the existing zoning. Um, and the determination you got basically laid out all the things that need to happen. Um, you're looking to see if we support it one way or the other. Um, the zoning hearing board is going to have to make the decisions on a lot of this as far as the setbacks and things like that. Commissioner Rappaport and Henry, I see you also. I'm not going to move this to anything until you've spoken. Um, the reasonable accommodation issue is, is a whole separate story. Um, are you aware that if you start digging a pool, you've got all sorts of displacement issues, flood issues, uh, stormwater accommodations. Are you aware you're going to have to deal with that? Yes, my my um, engineer, my engineer. He's also an architect, so he's he he's definitely told me that we had to do a stormwater stormwater management plan and all and all the other stuff. So yes, I'm, I'm definitely aware of that. Um, this isn't like a a short term plan. Um, so I I understand um, that is is going to be costly, but um, uh, 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 having been, like I said, disabled in a motorcycle, I'll, for me, after my surgeries, water was the only thing that I could, <laughs> water was the only exercise that I could do. And, and, and I've, I've always been a fit person. I play football. Um, so, so, uh, for, for me, I don't put a necessarily a cost on my health. So, um, I, I understand it's going to be costly. Um, when I bought this property, I wanted I wanted a property that could somehow accommodate something like like that. So, to answer your question, yes, I understand the water management plan. I understand it's not going to be cheap. Oh, no, I wasn't I wasn't hitting you with costs. I mean, I just needed you needed to know that that's that's part of the process you have to do. Okay. Um, the expenses are certainly your issue to deal with. Um, now you said an indoor, but it, Go ahead, Commissioner Ornars, give me one half second. Is this going to be strictly an indoor pool or indoor outdoor? Or I don't understand. I want to be able to do this all year round. So, um, yeah, we, yeah, there's going to be openings, but in the in the fall and and, and wintertime, I still want to be able to utilize this area. Okay. Yes. 
Commissioner Norris, and I'll get back to you. This is his word, so I'm going to defer to Commissioner Norris. Go ahead. Um, I was hoping perhaps to shortcut it. I was going to make the motion that uh, to move um, move it forward with no action. All right, uh, Commissioner. Uh, I got to get to Henry and, and, and Commissioner yeah. Rappaport. Commissioner Rappaport, have you got anything averse to that, or are you okay with that motion? Well, I had I had some questions, but I'd rather hear from uh, Mr. Sekawangu first. Henry, you're up. Just just real quick, I know, uh, Mr. Cooper, you did mention you know the neighbors are excited about a pool and uh, maybe the gym. I just want to make sure if you can clarify: is this use is this for public use for your neighbors, or is it just going to be you and your family? Oh, this this is not for public use. No. Okay. Just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. He's putting his neighbors on notice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a I'm a friendly I'm a friendly neighbor, but I don't I, I don't I, I, re, I reserve the right to lock my doors. <laughs> you just keep admission to pay for those costs. A commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, so so when I first read this without listening, and I think this this should be clarified uh, both tonight and before the zoning hearing board, so everybody's on the same page. Um, when I first read this, I thought this was a group home because there were three disabled applicants and asking for special accommodation. So I thought it was in a sense that kind of family unit and I'm hearing something different tonight. But, I did, but can I, you want me to clarify real quick? Well, I think you just did, but okay. go ahead, sure. So it's, it's me, my, my fiance, she's a disabled vet. Right. And we have an autistic child um, in Cheltenham High School. Right. Uh, so now I do understand that. I'm not sure I understand why it's necessary to do a, an a, accommodations kind of. It seems like that's a more um, a, a different level of um, zoning. And I, I just am not sure if that's really necessary or if it should just. Uh, you know, if that complicates things for us for the future, but I'll leave that for the zoners to understand. The other thing that troubled me when I read it at first was it sounded like it was going to be turned into a rental or vacation property. Um, you know, uh, one of the short term leases and stuff, and that's not legal uh, in most zoning areas. So if you know this property was, I'm not sure if you know, but this property was vacant for. I think 10, 11 years. Um, and I totally rehabbed it during COVID. So when everybody was out of work, I, I was still in here rehabbing. So I, I, I've been rehabbing it for about two and a half years. Um, I'm not sure of the aerial show. I just did the, the, the roof on the structure. So that was like um, 40, 40,000. I'm not um, doing all this work for a rental. <laughs> I can promise you that. Well, you know, a lot of people have rentals while they're still living in the place and have short-term rentals. Uh, so I, I guess all I'm saying is, uh, you know, along with whatever recommendation you're making, I think just some clarification, you know, conditions that clarify um, so that there's no misinterpretation going forward that it, you know, this is for the the residents uh, of the home and, uh, and not a rental property. And that, that would be consistent with the ordinance, correct? Yeah. Ed? Mm -hmm. so, so we probably don't need that condition. No, it's, if, if, it, that's, if, if that's what the ordinance requires, right? Clarified um, as, as part of the narrative, because I think it is a little ambiguous. Hmm. I, I don't know if the rest of the sort of ambiguous. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't agree with that. Either. All right. All right. Uh, if there are any other comments? We have a motion from Commissioner Norris for no action, was it? Yes. For no okay. action. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay. Best of luck, Mr. Cooper. Thanks, and I appreciate the board. I appreciate the work that you guys do being 11, 10 at night, and you still aren't done. Um... Well, then stop talking so we can move on. <laughs> Yeah. Have a good night. <laughs> Mr. Cooper, it, it wasn't you that held up this meeting. I was, yeah. I appreciate yes, it. Remember when I said this? I said, give me one to smile about tonight. That's the only time it's happened. All right. All right.
Mitch, we moved on to item two. Here we go. Ooh. Receipt of monthly citizens committee meeting minutes. And uh, okay, I thought we were still short at sharing a the screen there. Um, uh, item 2A, Planning Commission, May 22nd, 2023. Did anybody have any questions about what was in there? I think we've covered all the salient things from it. Okay, given that, I will move to accept the Planning Commission meeting minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item 2B, Board of Historical and Architectural Review, May 18th, 2023. Number one, approval of a certificate of appropriateness for application W23-275 of applicant Adam Hines. Oh, he's still here. Uh, owner of 146 Fernbrook Avenue, Wincote, PA, for the demolition of the existing garage and construction of a new garage with a larger footprint. Adam, did you want to speak to this? You're clapping. Wrong emoji. Okay. <laughs> it is late. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than clapping, did you want to speak to this, Adam? <laughs> All in favor of wrong My vote. apologies. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure this is my first time being in front of y'all. Uh, just I have a garage, kind of like the last applicant. This property sat uh, unused for quite a while, and I've been trying to rehab it. Um, the garage has, uh, as I presented in front of the... Uh, Board of Historical Architecture Review, the garage has a lot of uh, foundational problems and also a roof that is has a hole in a lot of areas, has a lot of holes in a lot of areas. Um, you know, and uh, going in front of the uh, historical board, uh, I, I understand the last thing we all want to do is like tear something down that's been here for a while. It's not an original structure, but it has been here for probably since the 30s, I think. Um, but due to the deterioration of the structure, um, I'm looking to replace it with uh, something that is much more foundationally secure and uh, slightly enlarge the footprint to fit a more modern vehicle. I believe that the board recommended moving it forward, if I remember my notes correctly. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Um, on Fernbrook, uh, Ann, is this on your side, my side? Yours. Mine, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm never sure of the address numbers. Um, Fernbrook is all yours, Brad. Oh, is it all? <laughs> I thought it was, I, okay, I thought it was part of her for some reason. Take it, Brad. Take all streets, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have no problem with this. The Bahar recommended moving it forward. Um, so I would uh, recommend approval. Uh, any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Congratulations, Adam. Thanks for hanging in. Yeah, I appreciate Adam. your time. Thank you. Item two, approval of a certificate of appropriateness for application W23278 of applicant Tucci Perry, owner of 110 Greenwood Avenue for installation of a new front door. And I'm sorry if I mispronounced the first name. Uh, that was also uh, uh, given approval to move forward. Is there any questions about this one? All right, then I would recommend that we approve it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, approval or stick of appropriateness for application W23 280 of applicant, oh gosh, Sue Young Douglas Koo, owner of 213 Fernbrook Avenue, uh, Wincote for the construction of a new driveway in front yard and a paver deck in the rear yard. A little more complicated. Um, that was also recommended to move forward. Henry, I don't think there were any issues there, were they? No. No. Uh, any questions about that? Any comments? Okay, the motion to approve it. All in favor? Aye. 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 And number four, approval of certificate of appropriateness for application W22-269 of applicant Matt Seigel, uh, representative for 149 Greenwood Avenue for the demolition of the existing structure and construction of a parking lot. I do know what this one is. Any questions about that? Okay. Is it uh, Brett? Yes. What's currently the existing structure? I believe Henry, that is part of uh, Reggie's old- Reg Reggie Jackson's house, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and they moved for approval, and I would so recommend. All in I favor? Think, I think Ann has a question. Ann, Senator Ann. Oh, okay. Ann, you got to raise your finger louder. 
Yeah, sorry. Um, so there were some missing pieces of information and um, I really missed them. <laughs> uh, one was that we didn't see what the Bihar members whose documents uh, were made, but weren't, weren't, they weren't in our packet or available to us. And we, uh, we need a review of what the Historical Commission's comments were. That's for beginning. So could we start with that? Well, this was presented, this was submitted to the Historic Commission. Uh, Historical Commission yeah, had an opportunity. Six months ago or eight months ago? Yeah, they had an opportunity to look at it. They uh, provided comments, uh, but there was no, no, I mean, everybody was pretty much disappointed. It was going to be demolished, but, you know, that was okay. in a, it's on the record somewhere you know, back. Okay, they, they made some recommendations for how to preserve certain artifacts or something. There was really nothing to preserve. I um, but I can go back to the minutes. Uh, Julie, I don't know if you have anything on that. Well, usually they they have certain requirements like to take pictures and certain things like that, right? This structure is so far gone. There was nothing to preserve. I know, they were gracious enough to let me in it. And I agree, it's uh, previous owners have definitely let it uh, deteriorate to the point of demolition. But it's still, you know, there may be reasons for the footprint or other uh, for whatever, you know, the traditional you know, it's still in the historic district. It still is part of the face of the historic district. So whether we like its face or not, uh, it, it's part of what, what needs to be treated as such. Mm -hmm. And the, the missing comments by the Bihar members who submitted um, comments that we didn't get to see, that was, uh, you know, the minutes talked to that. Uh, from the Bihar meeting. Um, and I, I wrote the minutes for that. Um, and the comments were incorporated in, um, you know, the, in the discussion. Um, they have been sent to the, the developer. And from a preservation perspective, I think the Bihar sees this as a win and that we're, you know, continuing to preserve the rest of the community, the rest of the neighborhood and the fabric of that street. Um, so that was just the, the feelings of the Bihar, in my opinion. And, and yeah, as I say there, it, it said, as you know, in the minutes that the people who weren't able to attend, there were, I think two people, um, I, I'm trying to remember now who it was, maybe Mr. Coping and, uh, I'm not absolutely sure who the other one was, but there were two missing and they had submitted uh, uh, comments that needed to be, it, you know, it said that they were. Uh, and I'm not sure where you're headed with this. I mean, they approved okay, it. Well, so there are a couple of, you know, remaining pieces of information I didn't get. Um, let me also ask, because this came up in the discussion, the it the uh, owners said that the um, the property behind that that um, cliff or whatever you want to call it that none of that belongs to them and I'm concerned as we move on to the you know the purpose of the demolition you know being the parking lot we don't have any information or at least I never saw any about the structural uh, integrity of the of that land of the um, of the way the, um, <clears throat> the whole back end of the property and the next door. Um, and does that does the building butt up against that? There's space in between. Is that correct? I, I can speak to I yeah. can speak to a response if that's okay. okay. Yeah, please. This this this, okay. this will come up as part of a land development. As part of any land development, they would be required to do stormwater. They would need to do a survey of the property to establish the property lines. If there are any issues specific to the slope, uh, those will be addressed as part of the engineering review 
um, uh, that the applicant would have to be would would need to address those issues. Okay. Well, so the engineering, we don't have to be worried. You're saying that there's no structural uh, complication from the demolition of a two-story building there. I don't believe so, but again, as part of any any demolition, they would have to. That would be on them. They're going to have to submit the engineering plan for the. Yeah, they would need to submit a plan uh, for for approval. I believe the fire march, the fire departments usually also if, utilize if can, these structures. Yeah, for, I can, if I can interject, it doesn't it doesn't affect our approval of their consideration of saying yes, we've given this a, a COA, and just they're asking us to approve that function. Anything that's going to be done after that fact or during that fact has to be approved by separate entities as we go along, be, be the engineering or anything else. So the demolition itself is a separate approval process as opposed to the appropriateness. Is that the clarification there? I thought Henry was going to say something, but I would say basically yes, because the engineering plan has to be submitted as far as how they're going to demolish it. This is the question, can we demolish it? Yes, but now they have to have a plan of how it gets demolished. So the contingency uh, and the development of the parking lot and all of that is uh, still going to return to us, right? And I'm asking Mr. Sekulunga. Yeah, the, there will be a land development uh, as part of a land development submission as part of the development of the parking lot, correct? I, you know, so I, you know, part of, part of my concern is that in a previous um, visit to the Bihar, the questions were, these were the questions raised, right? Um, the, the members of the Bihar were concerned about the, uh, when you demolish a building, what goes there in return? They were worried. I think the, the idea uh, that one of the members stated was that it's like a broken tooth um, in the middle of the historic district. So there was um, a lot of concern as to what it would look like, how it would be done, and what the remaining uh, configuration for that part of the historic district was going to be. So that's, you know, that's what uh, generating these questions, and I'm not sure I'm hearing the answers. I'll, um, the, Baha, uh, uh, the Baha dealt with those issues. They actually had the applicant come back a second time. Know that. Uh, at I that time, the applicant presented what the final uh, look would be. And that's what technically generated the, the, the recommendation from the Baha. So all their concerns were addressed uh, as part of that recommendation. And I'm gonna throw a flag on the play here because at this point, all that stuff is, all of that is addressed by the Baha. The Baha has made a recommendation and that's what we have to move forward on. Edie, do you have anything, Jermaine, or can I move this forward for approval? I, I see somebody from the audience, but uh, you can move it forward. I'm not going to. Thank you. Okay, if, if I could just say something, because I was at the Bahar meeting, because I do live in the Wincote Historic District, and I was concerned about what was going on. One of the things uh, that may be uh, part of Saldel, you can tell me if that's that's part of it now, but I don't know whether it showed up in the notes or not, uh, was uh, the wall that they're going to put up. Uh, there was a discussion about uh, whether the wall was going to be um, uh, real stone or or some kind of facsimile of stone. Um, I'm assuming it's going to come up in Saldo. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I just want to know if it was included in the notes. It is included in the in the recommendation. Okay, thank the you. The recommendation Henry. is 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 uh, in the package. That we thank know. you. Yes. Given all of that, I'm going to move for approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So. I hope and one abstention. Uh, number three, I hope these get easier. Receipt of planning and zoning monthly reports. Any questions about that? Move to receive. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Number four, report of the building inspector. Always fun. Uh, Scott, anything exciting to tell us? 
No. Yeah. All in favor of uh, <laughs> receiving that report, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. All right. Number five, report of the code administrator. Uh, who's doing that? And, and Scott is making dead nasty gestures at me already. All in favor of receiving, say aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Old business. It's all old now. Any, any old business to bring up? Moving on. New business. Any new business? Citizens Forum. Anything you're the only citizen, no, you're a couple citizens left. Please, you don't have anything to tell me, right? Okay, closing citizens for move to adjourn. All in favor, good night. Hi. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody. All right, good night, everyone.